I'm Roger. And I'm Adam. And welcome to another episode of RC Street Shop's How-To Videos. And what will we be how-toing today? Today we're going to how-to, how to pick the right lithium battery for your brushless RC car. Nice. I know a lot of, we get a lot of questions about that. Yeah, I was going to say, now, is it always well, be paired with a brushless motor? Not necessarily, okay. but actually, like I said, we probably don't get enough questions about this, is actually yes. what I mean. And this is actually pretty important, and this is something that not many people really cover. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've had, you know, being a shop and dealing with warranty things, we talk to the manufacturers pretty often, and one of the things that they stress is running the appropriate battery in your car, mm -hmm. and that's going to help you out in the, you know in, in many different ways. All right, let's see. So, uh, so today you're going to tell us how to choose the proper lipo for our setup. Correct. Uh, what tools are we going to need to play along today? Your brain. All right, oh, brains are expensive. <laughs> hard to get. Yeah, yeah. If you don't you have, have one, to have one in order to. Per Participate in this particular right. exercise. Right. If you're not sure if you have one, check with your parent. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. What steps will we be covering today? Uh, essentially, we're going to go over some LiPo basics, like C rating, milliamps, stuff like that. Okay. And then we're going to talk about uh, why you need to run a minimum C rating and uh, what happens if you don't and what happens if you do and why you don't really need to go too high, things like that, wasting money. A lot of technical gobbledygook. There will be today. On the batteries. That you didn't realize is really kind of important you understand and know. Uh, right. No, very Roger much is so. Right. It really is one of those things that uh, customers come up here and they just think it's a one size fits all kind of thing. And lipo batteries are not like that. It's not just, oh, well, it that's fits. very true. Plug it in, let's go. Right. It's not the case. You need right. to actually be paying attention. So right. that's why we're here. So mm -hmm. with that said, why don't we magically crossfade? And dive on in. For some lipo basics, uh, what we're going to talk about first is uh, milliamps, voltage, and discharge rate, which is a C rating. Uh, as for any battery, these have voltage. Uh, lipos are, uh, let's see, they are 4.2 volts per cell. Okay. Uh, and that is, so lipos have a lot of voltage per cell, a lot of power. Now you want to, let's, let's break it down even more basic before you get too far. Explain to them what you mean by cell. A, a cell is essentially an individual battery piece by itself. Yeah. So in here, for example, if you look real carefully in the close up, you'll see there's two layers in here sandwiched right. on top of each other. Each right. one of those is a cell. Yeah, it's an individual battery. So yeah. with lipos, they run less cells on your basic cars with nickel metal hydride batteries. Mm -hmm. Your cell is your little oval piece. It's they about look like big. more traditional batteries, and there's right. really six or right. seven of them. Yeah. Exactly, and that's what a cell is—just an individual battery. Yeah. The numbers you want to look at that are really all oh, there are three numbers on your battery that are extremely important. Okay. There is voltage, there is milliamps, and then there's discharge rate. Okay. So voltage is going to be like either seven point four or. Uh, 11.1, 14.8, 22.2. Uh, Common in the RC scene, we see 7.4, 11.1, right. 14.8. So those tend to be the common ones. Right, correct. Because you've got two, three, four cell batteries. Your two and three cell batteries tend to be for your, your 10 scale cars. Mm -hmm. Your four cell batteries tend to be for your 8 scale cars. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that's important because if you run too much voltage through your speed control, you're going to fry it. That's important. Is you, and that's bad. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be really expensive and really, really, really pretty when it catches fire in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so next is the milliamps. Real simple. Milliamps is the big number on there. These are we have a, a set of a trio of five thousands here for you. Yeah. Uh, five thousand milliamps. That's basically like a gas tank. More milliamps, more runtime. Milliamps have nothing to do with performance. Yes. Nothing at all. So we get a lot of questions. Oh, was the five thousand faster? No. no. If it's the same battery. No. Now we'll get next is discharge rate. That is the C number, and that's what we're going to kind of concentrate on today. Yeah. Is discharge rate. 30 C, the C stands for capacity. So 30 C means that this battery has 30 times 5,000 milliamps of discharge rate. Now, this fancy formula is you can look up on Google to figure out exactly how many amps this battery will discharge at once. Some of the venoms actually will say on here. Like this battery says uh, continuous discharge 30C, which is 150 amps. So this is a, this battery, 5030C, will discharge at 150 amps continuously without damaging the battery. Okay. Now what does that mean in English to the layperson? What does a discharge rate mean? Well, it's how much energy the battery can, can get rid of at, at one time. Now, and how does that apply to an RC vehicle? So, so you know, like, can you put a, a, a higher discharge rate, make it go faster? Yes and no. Okay. So, um... 
most manufacturers recommend a minimum discharge rate. Now, the reason it's a minimum discharge rate is because what can happen is your speed control has little capacitors on it. Capacitors are these fancy little things that store energy, mm-hmm. and the whole point of these is to keep a uh, steady flow of voltage going through this to the speed to the speed control. Okay. You don't get so it doesn't have spikes or dips. The, yeah, the, it's smooth. Right. The capacitor has a little storage. It's kind of yeah, a little storage tank in it, and it's, if there's a little bit less, it compensates. If there's a little bit more, it kind of takes it in, okay. and that gives a real smooth, even flow of power to the uh, to the board. So, um, the whole point of now what the what will happen is if you don't run enough discharge rate. The battery struggles to feed the speed control the energy it wants. Okay, that makes so, sense. Right, yeah. so what happens is the capacitors are constantly correcting and it wears them out prematurely. Okay. And then once the capacitor okay. fails, your speed control is dead the instant the capacitor fails. So basically, you know, they're expecting X amount of energy to come down the pipe. Right. And if you don't have a high enough discharge rate, you're not sending enough energy down the pipe. Right. The capacitors yeah. are constantly stressing. Stressing. Everything. Yeah, exactly. You're stressing okay. the capacitors. So now what's the problem with this is this doesn't happen overnight. Okay. This happens over a matter of time. Yes. So it takes a while to wear the capacitors out if you're stressing them. Now what happens is people will have a speed control for six months or four months or four or whatever that amount of time will be that they'll think is acceptable for the to last. Yeah. Speed control fails, and they'll think, oh, my speed control just died. Yeah. No big deal. When in reality, you actually killed it yourself by not running enough discharge rate. And you'll never, if you're not paying attention, you'll never figure that out. Right. Now, the other side of this, too, is that not having enough discharge rate heats batteries up. Now, lithium batteries don't like heat. So if you don't have enough discharge in the battery, your battery is going to swell prematurely. Oh, which is one okay. thing we see all the time. All the time. People come in with a two-month-old battery that looks like a balloon, and they're like, well, why does this happen? Well... Because you're done, you didn't pick the right battery for your application. Now, you're going to look at this next and go, how do I know? Well, there really isn't a way to know unless you do a little reading or do a little research. Yeah. Uh, a perfect example is if you talk to Traxxas, Traxxas will tell you do not run their brushless cars on anything less than 25C. Mm-hmm. So if you run less than 25C, you're going to end up killing your speed control. You're going to end up wrecking your batteries. Yeah. Next thing is you've talked to Castle Creations. Castle recommends 35C and above. So do not run anything less than 35C if you've got a Castle motor. Yeah. Now, they, they're very specific about this, and a lot of this information we got directly from Castle and from Traxxas themselves. And this is in their manuals. Right, right? it is in their manuals, like you've too. You've got to dig down into those. If you, you know, if you are playing in the realm of, of using LiPos, you should be looking a little deeper into your manual. You really should be. Because right, Because right. these need to be cared for a little better. I mean, right. all of it. It's just a, a higher quality battery that requires a little more maturity and right. attention. Right, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Your LiPos are a little bit... Uh, they can be touchy. Then they can be dangerous. You know? so yeah. So if you're at this point, you need to kind of deep dive and look and make sure that you're matching up your C ratings. Right. Right. So now there's also you can go with the flip side of this too. Now mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with running too much. There's really no such thing as too much discharge rate. So really so. the only thing you're really concerned about is too little. Right. Exactly. All right. Like we have a 100C 4500 uh, battery right here. Well, that's ridiculous. 100C is crazy amount of discharge. Uh, like this battery here probably will do... Uh, 450 amps of discharge. Wow. Now, there's no way anything that on wheels is going to discharge 450 amps continuously. So what is that for, by the way? This is a shorty pack for racing. Okay. Now, the as you go up in discharge rate, you go up in performance. So the initial acceleration, they call it punch, when you first get on the throttle is when the maximum load occurs in the motor. Mm-hmm. So when that maximum load occurs, you want to be able to supply the motor with as much juice as you can. That's where the discharge rate comes into play. Mm-hmm. Now, you have a point with this that... There's a diminishing returns factor that comes in here. Okay. Now, if all batteries are the same price, it wouldn't matter. Just go with the highest discharge rate you can find. Problem is that as you go up in C rating, you go up in battery quality, and you go up in price. Okay. You go up significantly in price. Yes. So we have a two cell 100 C battery right here, which is $90. Yeah. Compared to a 25 C battery, which is $57. Yeah. Next to a 30 C battery, which is 59. 40 C, which is 80. So. Now, is there going to be a difference in performance between this 30 and 40? Yes, there will. Are you going to notice it? Probably not. Unless you are a hardcore, enthusiastic race. Yeah, the only time you're going to notice that is if you're racing against someone who has exactly the same setup as you and has a different battery from you. Like, literally, they make 100C batteries because guys race spec classes where everyone's got the same thing. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's going to make you a difference in speed is the battery. Yeah. So that little bit of performance that guys so gonna, not worth chasing and spending no, money no on for the no. average RC person right okay. so a perfect example is like your brushless stampede or your yeah. brushless slash 
Traxxas recommends 25C minimum on that. If you run a 35 or 40C battery, you're going to see a noticeable difference in improvement, and it's probably worth the difference in price from a 25C. If you start running 80 and 90C batteries in that car and you're paying $30, $40 a battery it's more, not it's not worth it. it. Don't spend that, spend that money somewhere else. Buy yourself a cheeseburger or something. <laughs> Stop you know. for a snack. Right, because you're not really going to notice that much of a difference between, yeah. say, a 30 and a 60 once you get that far above the minimum. Gotcha. So, you know, like I said, once you're going above the minimum, as you keep going up, you're seeing less and less of a difference in performance. Don't waste your money on really high C batteries unless you absolutely have to have it and you don't mind spending the money. All right. Don't let anyone tell you, oh, you got to get, you know, you don't need, as long as you're above the minimum, you're safe. And like I said, mm-hmm. you know, and, and how much C rating you're going to want to run, it just, just depends on everyone's budget. If you got money to burn, then hey, great, get that 150C battery and spend $300. There if not, you go. You know, your one RC friend will be impressed. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where is there, you know, someone's looking at all this, where to pay extra attention? Uh, pay that? extra attention to the C rating and the instructions in your book. If you're not sure and you can't find it, always give them a call. We learn this stuff from but talking we, to the manufacturers. And looking and at looking the manuals, at manuals. For real, that's what right, we're doing. Right, right. If you're not sure about something, give them a call. If you can't find it in your manual, call them. Deep. Every manufacturer has a tech line. They're happy to talk to you. That's what they're there because, for. Because, yeah, that's what they do all day. If you call HBI and say, hey, I've got a Firestorm Flux. What's the minimum of you I should run in your car? They're going to tell you. And the, and odds are, not only are they tell you, very good chance whoever you're talking to is going to know that information almost right off the top of their head right. or, like, within seconds of you asking. Right. There are times right. I get those calls here in the shop, and I'm like, uh, hang on. <laughs> you know, and five minutes later, I'm still like, oh, right. we're Googling it. I don't know. Right. You know, so, yeah, right. you know, I mean, definitely a great use those resources. They're yeah, there. That is what we do. If we don't know the answer to a question, we go to the source. Mm-hmm. And we don't go to the Internet. We don't go to our friend's friend. We go to the source. If yeah. I don't know what battery I need to run in uh, a brushless Kyosho, I call Kyosho and say, what mm-hmm. is the discharge rate I need for this? What do I need to do with yeah. this? So, uh, in closing... If you're not sure, go to the source and ask. If All you can't right. find it in your instructions, go to the source. That was kind of a tip, but I was going to ask you if you have any more tips. Uh, do you have any more tips? To that follow? is it. All right. Uh, so it's oh, you know I do. Okay. Before, don't always remember discharge rate is forty times the capacity. Okay. So if you have a forty-five hundred and a five thousand, and they're both twenty C. The 5,000 is going to have more amps discharging than the 4,500 will, and it's just because it's a math problem. Okay. Math. Math hard. is scary, but is if scary. you buy Venom batteries, they tell you on the battery and do the work <laughs> do for you. They do the hard work for yeah. you. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's see. Uh, why is doing this important? It is important because it makes your equipment last longer. It allows you to maximize the performance of your car. And, and Roger's really selling that short. It really does increase the longevity of your life, right. like he said. You know? Right. You don't know your, you know, the damage you can do. You won't know until it's done. No, that's a very good point. And right. you know, so knowing this will prevent that. You know what they say: knowing is half the battle. So there you that's go. Right. Um, you know, your battery's not going to jump out and tell you, "I'm about to swell because I can't keep up with this car." Yeah, yeah. It's just going to happen, and it's going to be too late, and you're out sixty bucks. All right. On a scale of one to ten, uh, as far as one being the easiest, ten being the hardest, where does this fall? This falls as a one. I now, if you don't have a brain. Like we mentioned earlier in the video, it could be a ten. It could be a ten, but, but just like I said, ask. <laughs> okay, and um, I, not that this was a particular specific repair, but how much time should it take to pick a battery? Uh, if you know what you're looking at, right away. Okay, we have standard questions for our how to. <laughs> don't always fit the subject matter, but usually they do. Uh, let's see. I think that's going to do it for this one. Yeah, we're just trying something different. We've been doing a lot of uh, how to change parts of right. mechanical slashes. stuff. Yeah. Right. So we wanted to throw a couple of uh, other things, break it up a little bit, right. and see how you folks right. responded to that. Uh, if you are in the Southern California area, we always happy to see you. Come on in, come visit the shop, Roger. Where is the shop? What is the shop called? Where can they find us? We are RC Street Shop. 5521 East Spring Street, Long Beach, California, 90808. All right. And if folks are not in the Southern California area... Don't come. Don't. Just kidding. You can't come. You can't be here. Uh, But you could call. Is there a number they can call? There certainly is. As soon as Roger remembers it. Actually, I know that's going to be better than my own number. 562-425-9000. And uh, 
if you don't want to speak words into the phone, you are welcome to drop us an email, info at rcstreetshop.com. We are also on the social media. We do the Twitter thing, RC Street Shop, all one word there. We're also on Facebook. You can like the page, RC Street Shop. Keep up on things that way if you prefer. We also have the YouTube channel, obviously. You're watching a video here via YouTube. We do you appreciate it. Uh, we do all sorts of stuff there. We got how-to videos, product of the week, and I'm sure more things are coming down the road as surprises are coming in the next few months. Um, and you'll find out more about it here on the channel. So we do appreciate it. Like the video, but more importantly, subscribe! subscribe! Hit that subscribe button. We would appreciate do it. Do it! Uh, tell your friends, tell your enemies, and we'll see you next week. I triple dog dare you to subscribe. Now you have to do it. You don't have a choice. You have to.